Okay, guys, so let's talk about what is infinite series. So before we learn about series, let's talk about sequence. You must know the quick difference between sequence and series. Everybody know what is infinite. Infinite means keep going forever. And that's why we have those three dots here. Those three dots signifies that you keep going forever. So what is the biggest difference between sequence and series? So the biggest difference between sequence and series is sequence, all the terms are separated by a comma and the series means those commas are replaced by a plus sign. Also series you can denote using a sigma notation where this tells you where is the beginning, that's a where is the end and that's the rule. We are going to explore infinite series. Uh, what's happening to the sum? Do we get the sum? Sum exists, sum does not exist. So to check that out, we have to look at the partial sum. So first of all, let's take a look at the partial sum. What is a partial sum? Partial sum has a word part and the sum, that means sum of part, part of the sum, part of the terms. Okay, so let's take a look at here. This is the sum of all these terms. And let's say, instead of going to infinity, we add n number of terms. We say n number of terms we add, so that is s sub n, which is means of sum of first n terms. Okay, if the sum of a first n term exists, then we can check it, what happened to the n approaches infinity, and then based on the end behavior, we can estimate whether the sum of infinite many terms exists or does not exist. So end behavior of S of N is the important. So what's so special about geometric series? Uh, geometric series are nothing but the another way to write exponential functions. And we know that the exponential functions could be exponential growth and exponential decay. Exponential functions have a common base and that common base is the same as a common ratio. What is a multiplication or division factor? So what happens if it is a exponential growth function? Well, if it is exponential growth function, which means the ratio is greater than one, that means the multiplication factor is greater than one, an exponential decay function, that means it is the base is reducing, uh, I mean the base is less than one and it's uh, decaying, which is very similar to the end behavior of these I mean, end behavior of the exponential functions are very similar to the whether series converge or diverge. That's the key what we are looking at here. Okay, so what's the diverge means? Let's talk about the diverge. Exponential growth keep going forever, up, 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 and then we say that series diverge. Exponential decay function keep coming down, 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 and then we have some kind of horizontal asymptote, and that's what we call it converge. Let's take a look at this uh, picture here. And it says, write the geometric series and its sum that is visualized by this image. Okay, so let's take a look at this image. We have a half of the triangle. So we can say one half. Okay, we can say that's the one half. Then we have a one fourth, which is quarter of the square, but this triangle, so that's the one fourth. Then we have a one eighth, 1 16th, 1 32, 1 over 64. So you can see here what is happening here. What is this sum equal to? The sum exists. We know that there is infinite many triangles here, infinite tiny, tiny, tiny triangles. If we keep adding, keep adding, keep adding. So do you want to guess what will be this sum? What this sum will be? Any guessing? Half and half. So this sum is equal to 1. Well, how can you add infinite many terms and you get the answer one? Let's check it out. Okay, so the sum of infinite geometric series. Now we are supposed to derive this formula here, but uh, due to time restraint, we are just going to explore the formula and uh, you must know how to use it. If we had a regular classroom, this formula will be given in the formula sheet. So we are not going to derive how you came up to this formula. We just need to know how to 
use it. Okay, so think about this. This is the geometric series. A is the initial value. You can say R is the base and K is equal to one to infinity. Now what is this A over one minus R? A is the first term. A is the first term. When you expand it, the first term is a A. R is the common ratio. Now, this formula is telling you that you can add this many terms if and only if. That's why we have if and only if. Common ratio R is less than one. What happens if common ratio R is greater than one? Then sum does not exist. We cannot use this formula anymore and we can say that the geometric series diverge. So in other words, all the exponential decay formulas, you can say if we have a similar geometric series, they are all converge and we find this sum using this formula. If it is exponential growth functions where the base is greater than one, which is a common ratio greater than one, we can say all those geometric series diverge. Okay, so let's take a look at this example too. Determine whether the series converge. If converge, find the sum of each infinite series. Okay, so let's try to expand this series. You are given here summation notation n is equal to one to infinity. So what happens if you substitute n equal to one here? So that's my first term, four, 0 0.6, n is a one, one minus one is a zero. What will be my second term? n is equal to two. That's my second term and then these are my all other terms. Okay, so let's find out whether sum exists or not. We have to find out whether series converge or not. So common ratio r, which is 0 0.6, which is less than one. R is a common ratio, which is 0.6, which is less than one. And the first term is a four because zero power gives you one. So clearly sum exists. Now, what is the formula? Formula is sum is A over one minus R. A is a four, which goes in the numerator. One minus R is one minus 0 0.6. And that is equal to 10. So this is so amazing that you add all these many terms, your answer will add up to 10. So what does this mean? Well, what does that mean is, let's take a look at this picture I have here, is the blue color is the each term. You can see the first one is a four, which is this first blue dot here, four. Um, then each time you multiply by 0.6. So the number are going down and down and down. And then you can see that this is exponential decay function has a horizontal asymptote at a zero. So if we add all this many terms, keep adding, my answer will be 10. So blue dots are the each term, number of terms. The red dot is the partial sum. Now I have in the picture added several terms so that you can see, but what I was trying to explain here is if n approaches infinity, this number will be 10. So what does this mean? What this means is you have to know all these three means same. Summation notation for 0 0.6 to the n minus one, if we expand all these terms, it will become 10. Okay, but let's take a look at another example here. What happens if we add one plus one third plus one ninth plus one over 27? What type of series is this? Well, you can see one becomes one third, one third becomes one ninth. Can you tell me what is my common ratio R in this case? The first term you know is one. What will be the common ratio R? Well, common ratio R is, are we multiplying by three or dividing by three? It looks like we are dividing by three. So the common ratio R is, oops, I'm sorry guys. Common ratio R is one third, which is less than one. Therefore, sum exists. And what is the sum? Sum is one over one minus one third. The formula is one more time. I should have written the formula here, which is A over one minus R. 
a is the first term r is the one third and one minus one third is two third and one over two third is three over two so if all this number of terms if i keep adding it will be one third okay so let's try to write it in a summation notation when n equal to zero to infinity first term is a one and one third to the n and now let's put all of this together if we put all of this together what this mean is one plus one third plus one ninth plus one over 27 all of this is equal to this is a condensed this is expanded form let me explain again this is expanded form this is a condensed form using summation notation and that's the sum is three half what we can say that this geometric series converges to the sum three over two let's take a look at one more example pi over 2 to the n well n is 1 starting from 1 so if i expand this series they are nothing but the power of pi over 2 pi over 2 pi over to the second power pi over to the third power and on all of them clearly what is a pi over 2 is it greater than 1 or less than 1 well, pi over 2 is 1.5707, actually. If you look at the pi, is a real number. So 1.5707, which is greater than 1. So we say that this series diverge. Okay, let's take a look at a different kind of example on the other side. Okay, so now we have some unknown x. We have this series 5x minus 5x squared plus 5x cubed minus 5x to the 4. So let's read this direction. This says specify the values of x for which series has a sum and find the sum in terms of x. So we do not know what is the value of x here. Let's say if sum exists, what could be the value of x? If sum exists, the common ratio has to be less than one. So what is the common ratio here? The first term is a 5x. The next is a negative 5x squared. So I can say the common ratio r is negative x. Each time I multiply by negative x, each time I multiply by negative x. Okay, so for sum to exist, the common ratio r has to be less than one. In this case, r is a negative x, so negative absolute x, which absolute value becomes positive x, which is less than one. Okay, so some of you might stop here. What is this? It says find the values of x for which the series has a sum. Absolute x is less than 1. That answer is not telling me anything. So here in this case, you have to know how to solve absolute value equation. So what that means, my x value could be between negative 1 and positive 1. This is what my final answer is x could be positive one negative one because absolute x means x positive or x negative so that's what this answer find the values of x okay so now find the c sum in terms of x well formula for the sum is a over one minus r right so what is a in this case a is my 5x that's my a one minus r now r is a negative x so 1 minus negative x becomes positive and that will be the answer 5x over 1 plus x what's the purpose of doing all this in terms of x all of a sudden in calculus we are looking at a rational function as a series so this is become a rational function if we become an add and what will be the domain of x which will be here we are trying to find the domain that x could be between negative one and one then this series will converge to a sum and the sum would be 5x over 1 plus x we don't have to really actually find the value of x we can estimate the value of x is somewhere between negative one and one okay let's take a look at another example here oh bonus try to rewrite this summation notation let's try what is the summation notation each time r is negative x so here summation notation 5 is my 
five x, you can say you start with a one. So mm, hold on. Uh, I don't think this answer is correct. I think I made a mistake here because if n is equal to one, then my first term will be negative five x. So I guess um, there is a small typo here and I can make it extra negative sign here. That would be my first term. And that will fix all the answers. Um, okay, so let's uh, talk about another one. 1 minus x over 3 plus x squared over 9 minus x cubed over 27. Biggest question is what's the common ratio r? How do you go from first term to the second term? Now clearly the first term has a 1 but then there is no x so each time you are multiplying by x that is for sure. Okay there is a each time I guess you are dividing by 3 right so I can begin that my common ratio r is x over three. Okay, now let's take care of positive negative sign. My first term is positive, the next term is negative, and then the third term is positive. So I can say my common ratio is negative x over three. Hmm. Well, for sum to exist, my ratio has to be less than one, which means absolute value negative x over 3 which becomes positive x over 3 has to be less than 1. If you multiply both sides by 3 you get absolute x is less than 3. What that means is my x value could be anywhere between negative 3 and 3. So what will be the sum for this sum to exist sum is a over 1 minus r. a is the first term which is a 1. Common ratio is negative x over 3. 2 negative makes it positive and you can stop here. If you stop here we will accept this answer but sometimes uh, we can resist to fix that so that is a 3 over 3 plus x. Well, I have given you a couple of more examples here. Make sure you check those out on uh, this uh, calculator. It's very nice to see how those look like. Um, the practice example two here, I would like you to explore and check the answers in the classroom and um, send any email if you have any question concerning.